You're watching Actors Reporter with uh, host Kurt Kelly, and my name is Alan Flores. I'm co-founder and instructor at GameBot School. I'm Kurt Kelly from Live Video Inc. and Actors Reporter. We're at the American Film Fest, the AFI event that's been going on for how long, Alan? I don't know. Neither do I. I just figured. A couple were, days, I guess. You've been here longer than I have, so okay. I would ask, yes. So you were here speaking on a special panel speaking about the future of storytelling. What right. what happened? Well, I mean, I, I think they brought me in because, you know, I'm, I'm a video game designer. Mm -hmm. I've been doing that for, you know, over 20 years. and So just you're to, just getting started. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I was talking about the uh, their perspective, the game designer, uh, right. how we incorporate story into our games, the different ways that story is delivered. For video and, games. For video games and right. that, the evolution of how story is told. Cause we, it's told in lots of different ways now. So, mm -hmm. so the video games you work on uh, specifically for the sake of this panel are targeted at children creating their own games? Well, we were, I was talking about both. I mean, games I used to work on when I was working uh, for big publishers, you know, having their own story. And also working with kids because I, you know, started a school that teaches kids how to make their own games and how they would incorporate story and, and tell story in their own games too. So how has that business changed over the last 20 years from where we were to where we are today? I mean, it's changed a lot. I mean, games are delivered in so many methods now. Before it was like you get your game console and that's sort of it. Now mm -hmm. it's like I can play a game console, I could play it on my phone, I could play online, I could play you know, a Facebook game. There's so many different ways and then the way that people want to interact with story is different. Um, the way that the game mechanics are played is different. It's uh, so many different ways to do that now. Now part of what you're teaching children is how to uh, create their own games, if you will? That's correct, yes. How does that work? Um, well, primarily we, we teach them the basics of how to, how to use a tool. Um, uh, there's several tools that we use. It's like where you don't have to and you don't have to use uh, programming. You can do drag and drop interfaces or stuff where you uh, you know you move things around. You know using the game controller. We mm -hmm. use uh, those things that the kids can interact with. And then we teach them how to make make some basic um, demo games, and then get to the point where they actually start creating their own games. So where do you see the industry heading? Because we're moving so fast. If we blink in five minutes, there's going to be five new technologies. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely the case now. Because, I mean, we have the PlayStation 4 coming out. I think it's within a week. And then the Xbox One is coming out. So the new consoles are coming out. Then you have the PC games. There's still there's still people who are making games on there. There's the, the mobile market is uh, is blowing up. You know, there's lots of different ways to, to, to play games. So it's just, uh, you know, I think there's something for everybody. There's people that want to play games in lots of different ways. And they can have any kind of game that they want. They could, they could find it, find somebody who's making that game. Right. Having done several video games myself, not designing like you do. Right. Because I'm not sure I would have the first clue. Well, I would, but, um, but actually... Thank you. I'm coming to school soon. <laughs> Excellent. Um, but having voiced a lot of games, um, I'm seeing how in some ways video games are morphing the film industry. Yeah, I, I mean, I think so. I mean, there's a lot of the technology that we're doing that I think is pretty pretty cutting edge technology, like, you know, the facial motion capture stuff. You right. know, they're incorporating that into, into film and, and that sort of thing. And there's also, we're taking a lot of stuff from film and the story structure for some of the more linear games and a lot of special effects that we're creating is being taken back and forth across industries. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of crossover, I think. Well, and E3, which has become huge here in Los Angeles, a convention of people coming like AFI has become, like AFM has become, like some of these larger conventions where people come from around the world because it's such a big business. Yeah, I mean, you get a lot of a lot of film people there that want to check out and see what's going on, see what the latest games look like. Well, and some films now are being based on video games and vice versa. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, what are some of the projects you're working on that uh, we should be on the lookout for? Well, I mean, you, you know, my, my past was making console games. You know, mm -hmm. I worked on Tony Hawk games. I worked on Guitar Hero. But now, you know... You know Just folk, a couple of little games. A couple of little games. Yeah, Guitar I mean, Hero. Now, which was enormous in the beginning yeah, of its time. Absolutely, um, and now I'm focused primarily on you know GameBot School, where we teach kids how to make their own games. And then one of the things we do is we have to learn the technology as well as we can, so we develop our own projects on the side, and then we sort of teach the methods that we learn to make those games and teach uh, our students how to make the games. And more and more teaching is also going to the internet and long distance learning. So do people actually have to come to your classroom, or is this a virtual class? Well, we have uh, on-site. Uh, lessons, and we're also going to be rolling out some new online video sessions mm -hmm. within the next few weeks, where people can uh, download these sessions, and they could go ahead and they can uh, learn how to make a game from the comfort of their own home. So, what's the average age of your students? 
I would say the, the base age is probably between 10 and 12 years old, but we have, you know, I have kids as young as uh, six. I'm going to feel a little old in your classrooms, I'm having a Well, feeling. 8 to 80, anyone can learn, you know? 8 to 80. Okay, I fit in that demo. Thank you. I feel much better now. Yes. So where are your classes being taught at here in oh, Los we have Angeles? A, we have a, a small uh, office in uh, Woodland Hills in the San Fernando Valley. Are you thinking of expanding your school so they'll be in other areas of the world? One of the things we're doing now is we're developing a mobile lab so we can take these computers and go to schools, do sort of like some outreach, do some after school enrichment. Right. Um, go to, we're teaching at a school uh, out in uh, Westlake Village. We're gonna go and actually bring the education to the kids. So this is actually like the pilot program that may expand on a much larger scale. Yeah, we would in love to see it expand. Future. Yeah, that, that, that's our plan for sure. And so for the learning, long distance learning, if you will, for people learning online, what website should they be going to? Well, go to www.gamebotschool.com mm -hmm. and all the information is there. Now, is this free or are these paid classes? Um, they're paid classes, although we do some Good. stuff. We do some stuff like for, for a charter school where the kids, you know, it's covered by the, the cost of the charter and we go in right. there and we teach, you know. What is the average cost if you have a student that you would like to enroll in your classes? What can people anticipate? Well, we have different uh, different levels. Private lessons are mm -hmm. about uh, $55 for a single session. Very reasonable. And it's uh, $200 if you sign up for a group of four. We also have these things called sessions, which is a group lesson, mm -hmm. which is uh, three students to eight students, and that's $240 for an eight-week course. So it's like virtual learning, if you will. Yeah. Okay. Um, what are some of the things we can expect from your vantage point of where the industry is headed? Uh, the game industry is, well, I think it's just going to be keep, uh, you know, diverging and, and doing more interesting things. I think more integration with, you know, what, what TV and film are doing, you know, and then more stuff with social interactions. And there's lots of, there's lots of places it can go. It's just so wide open. And um, now there's so many people making games and s the tools are so easy for people to make their own games. We're going to see more crazy stuff, more cool stuff, more innovative stuff. It's never going to stop. What about the language barriers, or is that not really that relevant when you're talking about games? You're talking about language barriers in terms of spoken language? Or spoken language being from another country, foreign culture. Well, I mean, we, we do lots of localization when we make a game. You know, we want to make sure that someone with a different uh, different country can, can play it. There's lots mm -hmm. of games with no language whatsoever. Like a game like Minecraft, there's no there's no spoken language at all. Right. Um, so a game like that, people can play, they can interact, they can make their own story, and they don't have to worry about you know not being able to speak English. So, for do you see also like films are being made with secondary audio programs? Do you see that happening more in video games where um, there will be either closed caption or some type of, of a language that people can read in the language of their choice or hear it in an alternate version? Yeah, I mean we do. You typically when we do a you know big console game, we're going to localize right. it across multiple languages, and then if you turn on subtitles for closed captioning, you can get that too. Fabulous. Fabulous. I really appreciate you taking the time Thanks with us today. Me. Appreciate it. I'm Kurt Kelly, and we are at AFI at the Roosevelt Hotel in Hollywood, and we'll be back with more in a moment from Actors Reporting Live Video Inc. Thank you.